What I find special about this area that you wouldn't find anywhere else is the birds that we get above our head right now. I mean the kind of the kind of snorkeling and stuff that we get here. You can't find it elsewhere. So I think that is some of the reason that we should try and protect this area as well. We are responsible for the protection of the marine protected areas in Tobago. We are totally excited about the new proposed Northeast Tobago Marine Park. It's an area with a, an extremely diverse flora and fauna, and we are looking forward to that as an area for preservation and protection. I'm Curtis Antoine, Charles Wilborn. I mean, I've been a fisherman from and maybe at the age of 16. I mean, I've been doing this with my father because he was a fisherman as well. So, you know, I started learning the trade from him. And now he passed away, so I'm just continuing to do this stuff, which I really like. And this area, St. Giles area, is one of the areas that we will normally fish. Currently, there are three protected areas in Northeast Tobago. One is the Main Ridge Forest Reserve, which is the oldest tropical rainforest reserve in the world. Then there is Little Tobago, an important international bird sanctuary, and St. Giles, which is another small islet, also an important international bird, uh, birding area. Right now, you're in um, St. Giles area, one of our most popular fishing ground. I'm in the St. Giles area. It's, um, Pretty interesting because we have a lot of tourists, you know, come to look at the birds and stuff like that. I mean, on this area where we're sitting here, St. Giles Bay, as we call it, is one of the great areas for um, snorkeling. I mean, the kind of thing that you see out here, you would not be able to see it in shore because I want to believe because you're more into, you're more out at the ocean, so the life out here is a bit different than what you can normally get inside. So there's a huge variety of undersea life, not just the corals, the fishes, turtles nest in these areas on all of the beaches. We see porpoise and we see whales passing out there. It is important to protect this area because of the diversity in marine life, both out at sea and on land, and therefore it's an excellent area to incorporate the concept of rich to reef uh, management. The rich to reef concept really um, tries to um, explain that reefs are not isolated from forests and rivers, um, as well as uh, the forests are not isolated from reefs. We start with the forest and its connection to everything below. The water supply is food that goes into these areas the use of a wetland for get um, straining, I would put it, the mud out of the water. That is what a wetland does. And if you look at Northeast Tobago, most of those rivers are really going through um, a developed zone, which are the communities that are living around uh, on the, in the coastal zone. This is where the highest impact happens, where um, gray water goes into the rivers, solid waste goes into the rivers, people wash their cars, on a river oil and grease uh, solvents going to the ocean. And that is really um, the area where we have to look at what kind of impact uh, could we have on changing the quality of the river water that enters, enters the ocean. Because it's coming pristine from the river, from the ridges, and it has to, should go pristine back into the ocean in order to maintain the health of the reefs. If left without any protection, there will come a time when what we would have enjoyed as individuals today will no, be, no longer be available to the future generation. And we are hoping that with good management practices that we are able to make sure that it is there long after that we have passed on. I have seen some changes from my childhood to now. Uh, we have seen significant catch in some of the species 
that are known to be near shore, for example, the anchovies. We have seen significant decrease in catches like that from our sea and fishable. For the last maybe 15, 20 years, the kind of fish I used to be catching and the kind of fish I used to be seeing other people catching, we have depleted a little bit. I mean, one of the birds that we always look for and not seeing more is the mass booby. We have been looking for the mass booby for the last year or two, and we haven't seen it. If we see, it might be just one in flight. If we would take this into, into really calculate it into a budgetary equation, then we would see that it would really make sense to invest something into these resources and to maintain them, because that's that is really. Um, and a natural heritage, an asset that North East Tobago has. And if we destroy it, we destroy the cultural baseline of the communities, we destroy the economic baseline of these communities. It would be a, a, would lead to more or less people, more and more people would leave North East Tobago and be uprooted from their, um, from their heritage. I've been doing tours for the, probably the last 10 to 12 years. And I mean, it's something that I really like as well. You know, to interact with um, people, you know, sharing different ideas, learning different stuff, they learn stuff from me and stuff like that. So I mean, it's something I would like to continue to do and love doing. To me, one of the greatest wish that I have is that we could all grow and develop within this piece, but make sure we leave it in as much better condition for our future generations to inherit. The vision, I think, should as well be that people in Northeast Tobago are really proud and express this pride in their natural and cultural heritage and uh, see themselves as the stewards of this extraordinary place. <laughs>